Now let's talk about uh, another quantum number. Uh, and this quantum number is called as strangeness quantum number. And, uh, and this strange, uh, this strangeness uh, quantum number was, it was basically introduced by Gelman and Nishijima. And, and they introduced this quantum number to explain the strange behavior of K masons. Or we may also call them as kaons. Lambda. Sigma. Chi hyperons. All of these particles are called, uh, I mean, uh, all of these particles are called strange particles. And these particles are called strange particles, and they have reasons for that. Uh, the very first important reason is that they are produced in plenty. They are produced in plenty through strong interactions between, between nucleons. And... Uh, uh, and the collision time here, we, we know that this collision time is, uh, is, is very short of the order of 10 to the power of minus 23 seconds. And the next important reason is that, uh, that they, they are always produced in pairs. Always. They are always produced in, in pairs. And uh, uh, this is also called as associated production associated production and the, the next important thing is that they, they, they decay reluctantly through weak interactions so they decay through weak interactions now if I take an example of uh, say if I take an example of uh, K positive Masson, and these Masons are produced in pairs as follows. Suppose we have pi positive Masson and a proton, uh, it leads to K positive plus K negative and a neutron. And this strangeness is related to the electric charge uh, and it is related to I3. The, the, the third coordinate of isospin and it is also related to the baryon number and there is a relation between this strangeness and that relation is S is two times Q minus I3 the third component of isospin minus baryon number by two now this relation is, is, is known as Gelman Nishijima relation <coughs> And this strangeness, uh, this strangeness is, it is non-zero. S is non-zero. It is non-zero for s strong particles. And, uh, sorry, it's, it's non-zero for, for strange particles, I should say. It's non-zero for strange particles. And, uh, and it's zero for all other particles. And I can say that this S is, uh, S is it is non-zero. Uh, it's non-zero for strange particles. Strange particles. And it is zero for everything else, which are, uh, which are not strange particles. Now, uh, if we have to calculate the strangeness of some of the particles, say for example, uh, for, for K positive, we want to calculate its strangeness. That will be S is yeah, two times Q, uh, that is one, okay. Uh, uh, its third component of isospin is half. Uh, I mean, it's minus half and minus zero. Doesn't have any baryon number. So its strangeness is equal to plus one. And, and similarly, we can calculate for other particles, say K minus, uh, the strangeness will be two times, uh, it has minus one charge, and it is minus times minus half, uh, and minus zero, and this is gonna give me minus one. 
And we can take another example, say, say I will take, take lambda neutral. And for this particle, strangeness will be two times, it doesn't have any charge, it doesn't have the third component of uh, isospin, and its period number is, uh, uh, we have here minus one by two using for b equal to 1. So what will be the strangeness for this particle? This will be plus, this will be, no, this will be minus 1, minus 1. And we can take on another particle, say, uh, say the antiparticle of this, this lambda. Uh, for that, the strangeness will be 2 times, it is 0 minus 0. Uh, here I'll have plus 1 by 2. So this is going to give me the plus 1. And now, say for example, I will take a proton, and, and proton is not a strange particle. So for proton, I'll use the same formula for proton. What am I going to get here is, uh, is that the strangeness will be two times. Yeah, what's its charge is one, and uh, its uh, third component uh, is, is one by two, uh, and uh, this will be minus one by two. Okay, so we can see that this whole thing is going to die and strangeness for this is going to be zero. And this strangeness quantum number, uh, it is additive in nature. It is additive in, in nature. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, so here we have, we have talked about this uh, uh, strangeness quantum number. Now let's talk about this hypercharge. 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 Why? Now this hypercharge quantum number, it is basically defined as, as twice the average charge of each particle group. So, so if I have Q charge, then uh, the, the average of this Q charge is Q1 bar. So this hypercharge is simply two times Q1 bar. Now, for example, if I, if I take a nucleon group of proton and, and neutron, say for example, and if I take a proton and, uh, and neutron as a group, what will be Q bar for that? Uh, uh, it will have the charge of proton is plus one uh, and there is no charge for neutron divided by two. So this is going to give me one by two. So what's going to be the hypercharge for this system is twice Q bar. So this is two times one by two and this will give me plus one. Now, as we already know that, uh, that this Q bar is, it is, it's Q minus twice, no, not twice, it is Q minus I3. We have a relation between this Q bar and Q as uh, Q minus uh, I3. So if this Q bar is Q minus I3, uh, I can use this here in this equation. Now if I use it here, what am I going to get? I will get this hypercharge is two times. Q minus third component or third coordinate of isospin. This will be the case. And we already know that strangeness S is, it is two times Q minus I3 minus B. So from this equation, I can have two times Q minus I3 is, this S will stay, this minus B will become plus B. So Q minus I3 is going to be S plus, this is S plus B, twice of this. And we already have two times Q minus I3 is already equal to hypercharge. So we can have, uh, we can equate the two equations and we will get this hypercharge equal to strangeness number plus baryon number. And, and and similarly we uh, we can we can we can how we can calculate the hypercharge of 
of different leptons, mesons, nucleons, and hyperons based on this equation. And, and there are three additional quantum numbers, like uh, one is called charm, and it is symbolized as C. Then we have bottom, and it is symbolized as B. And then we have uh, up. Uh, no, it's not up, it's top. And it is symbolized as T. Now, this Gelman uh, Nishijima formula, uh, this formula is given by what? Uh, we have, we have Gelman Nishijima uh, formula. What is that? That formula is that this S is two times Q minus third component of isospin minus B. Or from here, if I write two times Q minus I3 is S plus B, nothing wrong with this. And this Q minus I3 will be S plus B divided by two. And I can calculate this charge as I3 plus S plus B divided by two. Now, with the discovery of the new elementary particles, I mean, we, uh, the, the, the quantum numbers like charm, uh, bottom, uh, top, uh, these quantum numbers were explained and they were, ex uh, they were introduced to, to explain the, the properties of these new particles. And the introduction of these new quantum numbers, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the, this hypercharge that we have, uh, which is hypercharge, as we have that y, that y is, uh, it is b plus s. Now, the other quantum numbers are added to it, plus charm, plus top, plus bottom. And, and accordingly, we will have Gelman Nishijima formula uh, modified. And what will be that formula? Uh, this Gelman Nishijima. Okay, so that will become Q is I3 we have, okay, uh, uh, plus B plus S plus C plus uh, T plus B, and this whole thing divided by 2. And this is called as, uh, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is called as extended Gelman uh, Nishijima formula. It's called as extended Gelman Nishijima formula.